home swap. Are you running on the hamster wheel, wanting a different life? Would you like to swap your shoebox apartment for a country house? Or your country house for an elite apartment? Or maybe replace your elite apartment with a tent in an open field? In our project, anything is possible. We're not bathing our children for three days. We'll enjoy the view and then go back to our trash heap. Nikita, what is wrong with you? Are you insane? Our new season of Home Swap will feature people exchanging homes, not only across Russia, but also with people in other countries. The Japanese, Russians and Japanese, brothers forever, Panamanians, the Dutch, the Africans. Get off the wheel. Break out of your routine. Let's go, go, go. Let's go do the home swap. I'm stunned. Goats! Well, where are they? Home swap. Meet the Karimov family from Bashkortostan, Russia. Emil and Aigul, both 39, and their daughter, Aya, 5. They live in a yurt. We are the Karimov family from Bashkiria. We live in yurts and enjoy nature. Aigul and Emil have been married for seven years. Dad! They used to live an ordinary life in the city of Ufa, but one day it all changed. Once I'd slept in a yurt and it turned out to be a life-changing event for me, I realized that I feel most comfortable of all in a rounded space. Since there are no round houses in Ufa, Emil sold his flat, built a yurt, and turned to a nomadic lifestyle, following in his ancestors' footsteps, and his life has become much more fun ever since. The yurt's diameter is 16 feet, while its height is 11 feet. It's not much, but it has all the necessities for a nomadic lifestyle. A stove, beds, carpets, national attire, and Tibetan bowls. Outside the yurt, there is an outdoor shower and two outhouses. All this cost $7,000, not counting the furnishings. I am Bashkirian, and my people were historically nomads. Unfortunately, now one can hardly find nomadic Bashkirians. We decided to revive the old traditions and commune with nature. At first, people thought the Karimovs were crazy, but after a while, a whole community of like-minded people, nurturing ancient Bashkirian traditions, settled around the yurt. Together, they built the shower, household outbuildings, and a canteen, where families can take turns cooking meals for the whole community. I am Tartar, not Bashkirian, but I still support my husband. I am very grateful to Aigul. There's an old saying, a good Bashkirian man will always marry a Tatar woman. Undoubtedly, it is Aya who is the chief nomad of the family. She has always lived in the yurt and has no idea of a different lifestyle. As there are no educational institutions in the steppe, Aya is homeschooled. As nomads did in ancient times, it is the mother who teaches her daughter everything that she needs to know. Moreover, Aigul is a breadwinner. I work for a construction company, and I need comfortable working conditions. Are you going to work right here? Well, I can't do it without your support, dear. Aigul did a lot to support her husband's nomadic lifestyle, but she is on edge now. She admits that she was not ready for the fate of a nomadic Bashkirian wife. As a woman, I would like to have our own house that would always stand firmly in one place. I've been asking for it for five years, but there's still no house. I realized that if I were to build a house, it would be a dome house, that is, a round one. The circle symbolizes movement, but I need time to prepare. That is why I see that I will once right here right now as a passing fancy. Home swap will help I will give her husband a kick in the seat to get things done. She dreams of a comfortable life in a big house. Home swap. And this is the Vigiliansky family. Nikolai, 35, and his wife, Oksana, 36, have five children. They live in a three-story house in Himki, a town near Moscow. 
We are the Vigilanskis. And we have five children. Five. Dear, let me speak to your daddy, okay? Please play over there. Help me, help me. We used to live in a three-room apartment with Oksana's mother before we moved to this house. Then Oksana got pregnant with our third kid and we realized we needed a bigger home. So they chose a big house with more than enough space. The 4,800-square-foot house has five bedrooms, two dressing rooms, three bathrooms, a huge combined living and dining room, and a vast yard. Now there is enough space for everyone. The house costs $340,000. All right, kids, who wants to water this tree? Maya, you haven't watered any yet, have you? Me, me, me! They can break dishes, get some... Flour. Yes, flour, and spill it on the floor. All over the floor. Or they can mix up some dreadful substance and get it all mixed up in their hair, and then they can all get wet in the shower and flood the entire corridor. We're used to it and keep calm. We're quite cool about it. Home swap. And it is not antidepressants that help all the family stay sane, but a housemaid who helps around the house. I managed to handle four kids by myself, but when I had the fifth, I understood I was on edge. So we hired Sarah, our housemaid. Hands off, this is my pan! You will all do it, but in turns. Since we hired Sarah, I have had more time to myself. For example, now I can go to work or the gym. Kids, let's go to the playground. Well done, Maya. The best way to spend time together is to just stay silent for a while. Yeah, just to stay silent together. After staying silent with her husband, Oksana goes out to be quiet on her own, do yoga and meditate. I've been into energy practices for the past six years. How do you call it? Shavasana. Shavasana. Shavasana is my favorite pose. You just lie there. I usually fall asleep. However, despite the Zen Buddhist lifestyle and Sarah's help, the Vigilianskis still have problems. We've lived here for three and a half years, and we have only had two floors so far. The third floor. What about the third floor, dear? No, we don't need it. It's absolutely useless. I think the way it is now is fine. Well, of course, as our kids grow older, this issue will become more urgent. They'll need rooms of their own, and we... The issue is already urgent, dear. I'll not decorate the third floor. Two floors is more than enough for us. Families with many kids even live in studios. Some even live in sheds. Home swap is more than just an adventure for the Vigilansky family. A change like this might even help Oksana prove to Nikolai that two floors is too little space for all of their kids as they grow older. Home swap. The show enables two families to exchange their houses and lifestyles, as well as their cars, their household problems, and even how they spend their free time. They also leave each other the amount of money they usually spend on themselves in three days. Emil, we should leave some money for the family that's going to come here. How much should we leave? I suggest not being stingy and leaving about $70. It is so easy to manage your money when your wife earns all of it. $30 at most. We should be more economical. Well, we definitely should, but $30 is too little. At least 15 per day, three days in total. We should be good hosts and show our hospitality. I agree. $45. 20, 30, 40. Let's see how generous the family from Moscow is. Let's do that. We should leave some money. You know, I'm thinking of $420. Listen, it's too much. There's nothing to spend it on here. Let's leave $70. Dear, how can a family with at least one kid survive with this sum for three days? Look, we have frozen dumplings, sausages, meat, and some other things. Okay, maybe not 70, but 100. What if they want to go to the sauna? Don't you think our guests may very well come from the countryside? Suppose our guests came from the countryside, as you say. If I were them, the first thing I would do is visit Red Square. The one-way trip by taxi normally costs 15 to 20 dollars. A meal in a restaurant costs about 100 dollars. I have no idea how they will manage with 70 to 100 that you suggest. Well, I don't have a leg to stand on. Let's leave 140. Here you go. May they live large.
I wonder how much they'll leave for us. You are so zealous to defend them. To make sure the houses are returned to their owners in their original state and that each guest family fully experiences the host's way of life, the families write down guidelines as proof that they have been following them. They'll take pictures. So first, the most precious in the yurt is the carpet. Rule number two, do not eat meat. What about the third rule? Whoever visits us is our welcome guest. The wife is to entertain guests as the lady of the house. Oksana, dear, let's come up with the house rules while you're doing yoga. So it is the mother who is in charge of harmony in the house. Okay, fine. The father babysits while the mother goes to the spa. I love this rule, and I hope our guest will appreciate it too. I arranged a spa day for her at 10 a.m. on Saturday. All done. In our house, meals are cooked by our housemaid. I think that our guests will have a great time staying at our house. Home swap. I would like to stay in a big house with all the modern conveniences. And I do not care where we stay. Our home is here. Wherever we may be, the space within one foot around us is our home. I want to go to the seaside. It doesn't really matter where to, as long as I have Nikolai and the sea nearby. Let it be Miami. Everyone's wishes and hopes are duly noted. Now it is time to swap homes. The Karimovs are going to the three-story house in Himki, while the Viglianskis are moving to Bashkortistan. Naturally, it does not have the sea, but there is the new Goosh Reservoir. Welcome to your new homes. Day one. Is it possible to accommodate five kids in the new home? Let's see. Oh, dear. I like it. There's a horse. This is, what do you call it? A yurt, right? A yurt or an igloo. Wigwams. Wigwam. Or igloos. Too low for you? Cool. Take off your shoes. Kids, take off your shoes. Listen, this is cool. Mom, look. Look, mom and dad probably sleep here and the kids over there. I was very surprised, or even a bit shocked. At the same time, it was not hideous. I did not think anything like, oh my god, this is awful. This all looks civilized enough. Mom, look, there's a toilet! I had no idea where we were, what that place was. Before that, I had only seen yurts and only my son's books when he had lessons on the world around us in school. It looks like a dressing room, I suppose. What do you think? Could be. It's a separate room right next to the bedroom. Almost like in our house. Right, the bedroom, the dressing room and a toilet, everything is close at hand. Yes, just like in our house. Or rather, it's Bashkirian one-tenth scale copy. Oh, what are you doing? Testing out our bed? Well, looks like a bed for kids. It's so cozy and soft, don't you guys think? Indeed it is. But there's only one bed. One? Where will our kids sleep? You can hardly find seven beds even in an ordinary house. Never mind, squeezed but pleased. Look, there's a stove. I wonder if we're supposed to light the fire? A hot stove which is not covered in the same room with our kids? I think lighting the stove could be dangerous. There is a huge stove. If it gets hot, it could be dangerous for kids. So I figured out that we cannot light it. We can wrap ourselves up in these beautiful ponchos that we found here. Yes, why not? And we have warm clothes, so we'll not freeze, but the question is, where are we going to sleep? I suggest whatever. The most important thing is for us to sleep over there. It's an adult bed, right? For adults. Our lifestyle is a far cry from everything that's going on here. It is time to go to the steppe and study the way that the nomads live, since the yurt has no toilet or shower or fridge. Oksana, look, the shower is over there, so we're not going to bathe our kids for these three days. Or we can use that bathtub. Amazing. Crap, look at that toilet. The local Great Pyramid. Yikes, it doesn't smell nice at all. I agree. That's right, kids. Nomadic toilets don't smell like raindrops and roses. Girls, I go first. There's another toilet. But even the smell did not slacken the hungry kids' appetite. Anybody here? We should figure out... Hello, my name is Oksana. I'm Andre. This is Nikolai. Nice to meet you. Same here. 
We're staying here for three days. Perfect. An awkward bearded guy popped up wearing a felt cloak. At first, I was even a bit afraid of him. What actually is this place? Where are we now? You're now in Bashkortostan. Emil is Bashkirian, following his people's traditions. His family lives in a yurt, and yurt actually means house in their language. Feel like Bashkirians. You know, Emil left you something for breakfast. The parents are anxious about the Bashkirian breakfast, but hungry kids leave them no choice. Is it porridge or some other cereal? Yes, it's talcan, a grain, like wheat. It's sprouted and lightly fried. Andre, are we going to bathe? Bathe? In the bathtub. Of course, if you bring enough water for it, why not? I don't feel like bathing. <laughs> Where do we get water from? See that really big water reservoir over there? It has a lot of water. We found only three beds in here, but there are seven of us. We do not have beds at all. People usually sleep on the floor, on felt pads or some sort of ground sheet. Oh, I see. Then I have no questions. What about cooking in here? The nearest shop is about 500 yards from here. Meanwhile, the Karimovs are almost in their new home, but the nomads already face the first challenge, fences. Where are we now? This is the house, look. Strollers, scooters, Aya, look, a bicycle. Obviously kids live here. Open it. Are there four kids? One, two, three, four, five, and the bikes. Looks like there are just as many kids. We found more than six scooters, right? We figured out that a big family must live here. Look at that black thing. Aya, look, you love it. A trampoline! A trampoline, hooray! A trampoline. Look at our daughter's pure joy. They enjoy gardening. They planted trees. They commune with the nature. And there is a pool. The water is rather cool. Touch it. Like in Nugush. Oh, a porch swing. Let's swing a bit. After a long and tiring journey... We deserve it. I was glad we ended up in a house. Home swap. And it is time to enter this house. Welcome. Let me get inside. And these are the owners of the house we're staying at. Yeah, the owners. What a happy couple they are. Look, so many clothes for kids. And a child seat. One, two, three, a bigger size, a smaller size, so many kids. I'm already a little bit confused. Looks like slip-resistant floor. It's so convenient. They decided to start the inspection from the top floor so as to not miss anything. Repair works are underway. It's not finished yet. Oh, what a big attic. It's not finished yet. Yeah, you could build a whole square here. So big that you could fit at least three yurts. The house is big, isn't it? Indeed it is. The kids' room. It's so interesting. Oh, a bunk bed. A bunk bed. Are you going to sleep there? On the top? Yes. Excellent. Do you like it? Why don't we go and see the other rooms? Yeah, let's go. This is a bathroom. Oh, wow. Wow, this is convenient. Look, children's potties. Yes. So they must be small. For most people, a bath and a warm toilet is more comfortable than a bathtub outdoors and an outhouse in the middle of the step, but not for a meal. Wow. Wow. What a luxurious room. Aya, it's a kitchen, especially for you. Look at this wonderful kitchen. Parents allow their kids to draw on the walls? Yeah, great. This is a good sign. It means that they don't have any limitations, like, do not touch this, do not go there. Well, shall we see what else is here? Laundry room? Laundry room. One washing machine on top of another. A double-decker washing machine, just like the bunk bed, right? Can you imagine how many kids must live here? Clearly doing laundry in this house for such a big family must require some considerable resources. Now Emil seems to appreciate modern conveniences. Cool. Oh, wow. This room must belong to a boy, a daring boy. I am like Bruce Lee. Aya, what about a sword fight? Emil remains a nomad warrior even in a cozy family home. By instinct, he went up against unclean spirits, if there were any. Anyway, now they will all run away for good. Hey, you attacked me right away. 
Ah, oh, yeah, spare your dad. Take that. Where did you learn that? You cannot learn it. It is in the genes of ancient Bashkirian warriors. Aya is her father's daughter. Aya obviously knows her way around weapons. <laughs> Unexpectedly. Yes. I guess this is the parents' room. Yes. Wow, just lie down and relax. Relaxation. We don't have anything like this in the yurt, of course. No, we don't. Finally, we can sleep in a bed. What is this stuff? Looks interesting. Wow. Look. Look at these. These are nails. Let me help you. In the end, Emil managed to find something familiar in the Himki house. Oh, damn. Well done. <laughs> what a twist. Well done, Dad. Aya, look. <gasps> Wonderful. Amazing. It's a steam barrel. You sit inside and your head goes out. You stick your head out. Yeah, we'll try it later. Looks like modern conveniences swept Bashkiri nomads off their feet, especially the father of the family. It was such an unusual contraption. I wanted to try it out because I really love all sorts of fun stuff like that. Wow, so many clothes. A dressing room, a huge full-length mirror, which we don't have. Lots of dresses. So it seems like she's a real fashionista. Well, like all women. Like all Moscow women. It was a whole world of clothes. Many people dream of it, but not me. I'm a nomad. I only need a backpack to hit the road. Aigul is trying to figure out how many backpacks and horses this family would have needed to move all of their belongings to a new location if they were nomads. As for Aya, what interests her most is in the ground floor. Aya, all the toys are here. Oh, I see. This is for roller skating. A helmet and roller skates. You've been dreaming of roller skates. Put them on. Let's go. Where are we now? Wow. We're in the kitchen. Dad's turn to skateboard. The house is big enough for Dad and his daughter not to take turns to have fun. They can do it all at once. Luckily, the floor is level, unlike the step. Ta-da! Hello! This is fantastic. Emil, they have an enormous kitchen. Uh, of course we can't have it in the yurt, but I would like to have a big kitchen in our house when we have one. Really? Of course. Aigul wants not only a good house, but also a big kitchen. Though after living in the yurt for five years, she is not too hopeful. The dishwasher has to be big. The family is so big. There's a pressure cooker and a coffee machine, which I'm so glad about. Look. Yes, a big piece of ham, cheese, another sort of cheese. And eggs? Butter. Various sorts of meat. There is so much food, but vegans can hardly eat it. Probably only the spices. But it is not enough to last for three days. Shall we see the house rules before cooking? Yes, you're right. Good idea. After feeding the children and leaving them to cook, the Vigilianskis also hurried to see the envelope, impatient to know what the yurt had left in store for them. Kids are outside. Five minutes to spare. Look, they left us $45. In Moscow, you could buy a couple of bottles of wine for this sum. Look, we have three rules. Judging by the photos, they are connected to the local customs. The most precious thing in the yurt is carpets. I hope they don't expect us to clean all of them. Or to make them. Or to make them. So we'd better keep the carpets away from our kids. You know Maya, she may well draw on them. The second rule, your favorite tea. Do not drink alcohol or eat meat in our house. <laughs> well, $45 and two bottles of wine sounds nice. Just what we love. That's weird. I thought nomads do eat meat. I even saw a deer skin over there. Did they let the deer go after they got the skin? The wife is to entertain guests. She is the lady of the house. Okay, please do. Interesting. <laughs> So, no meat, no alcohol. You entertain guests. We must save the carpets. That's it. Home swap. So, the budget. 100. 20. 40. Cool. Well, this is Moscow. Yeah, it's Moscow. Maybe even potatoes cost here. Half our budget. Yes. Maybe. You see who lives here. Let's count them. A boy and four girls. 
Five kids. Here's their mother doing yoga. Very well. So yoga, let's read the rule. People seek inner harmony in our house. It is the mother who helps find it. Oh. Well, maybe she is a psychologist. Mother is doing yoga at home. I told you a million times to start doing yoga. Well, let's read the second rule. We have a tradition. Father babysits while mother goes to the spa. That's amazing. Very well. I'm so happy about it. I've been dreaming about it. This is the third rule. Here is a woman holding a pot. Is it their grandmother? Meals are cooked by the housemaid. Oh, now I see. Wow, cool. Looks like mom is going to relax during these three days. Aigul loves the house rules while Emil's eyes popped out of his head. The Bashkirian step has different rules, where the man is always the boss, even if it is the wife who earns a living. First, I need to switch it on. Well... Maybe you should press and hold it. Like this? Are we going to have coffee? I have no idea how it works. Hey, bro. What's up? Oh, he doesn't like it. Either the cat has some problems, or he doesn't think he is Emil's bro at all. Oh. They just didn't clean it. So they just used it for too long without cleaning. Hooray! Good afternoon. Who is it? Who is it? Hello, my name is Sarah. I'm the nanny. Nice to meet you. I'm Emil. I'm Aya. I'm Aigul. We're going to have coffee. Would you like some? Yes, please. How do you like it here? How long have you been working here? Yes, and I like it very much. What are their names? The father is Nikolai. Nikolai. And his wife? Oksana. I see. What do they do? Oksana is a psychologist. We guess so. Nikolai is a programmer. So you help them with the children? Yes. And I also cook for all the family. By the way, Nikolai enjoys one of my dishes very much. Let me show you my culinary masterpiece. Sure. Of course. While I'm cooking dinner, Emil, I have one request for you. Nikolai usually cuts the grass in the yard. He asked you to do it for him. With pleasure. With a weed whacker or a scythe? A weed whacker. Let me show it to you. You. It took thousands of years for people to change nomadic lifestyle for the settled one, but the Karimovs managed to adapt within a few hours. Now it is time to master the work equipment. Wow, that's what I need. I've never mowed grass, and I have no plans on doing so. We have special animals to do this for us. While Emil is standing in for these animals in Kimki, in Bashkiria, the kids have dispersed in various directions after a hearty dinner. Their parents are calm, though, as all the step is spread out before them, and they can watch every child without leaving their chairs. It is different from our yard. This place is much bigger. Kids just spread out all over here. And we usually eat and drink while standing up. Yes, and we can just sit. Back home. I know that we have a house, a yard. A village. And here, what do you call this thing here? A tent? A yurt! A yurt! Right, a yurt. So it's our bedroom. And all the surrounding territory is the rest of the house. Yes, exactly. This is a very unusual feeling. In the evening, the Karimovs got so hungry that they are ready to eat the grass that Emil mowed. But luckily, it is not on the menu. The dinner is ready! Wonderful. I'm waiting for you. Let's go home. This is the favorite dish of the Viglianski family. Please try it. Thank you, Sarah, but we're vegetarians. We do not eat meat. Maybe you could just try the rice without the meat. No, sorry. Then the salad, at least. Of course, we will like the salad. Dad! Then, oriental green tea after the pilaf, and I will go upstairs to do laundry. Aya, do you know what you are eating? It's meat. What is what she wants? We do not limit our daughter. I mean, we do not forbid her to eat meat. She eats it if she wants. It is up to her if she wants to be a vegetarian or not. Right. What are you going to eat? I'm going to eat salad. Are you disappointed? No. The salad isn't going to fill us up. Shall we go buy something to eat? Yes. What if the beast awakes inside a meal? Mom, why don't you eat the meat? 
I want to support your dad. The hungry nomads go to the concrete jungle to hunt in a supermarket. As for Aya, she stays at home with the nanny, as this is the way things are done in this house. We need some onions and potatoes, $3.20 for nectarines. That's expensive. Look, they sell cut lemons over here and slices of watermelons too. Maybe it's a delicacy here. Why else would they cut it? I don't understand it. Look, a dollar seventy for a kilo? They've just cut it, perhaps. Twenty-two fifty for blueberry? But we have enough money. I guess they left us so much money because of such prices. Wait a second. Yellow watermelon? Here, yellow watermelon. Three twenty-five. Fine. Really? Why not try these? Barbecue? We could grill them. Then we need eggplants, zucchinis. Let's buy them. What? Tomatoes are in plastic, cucumbers too. Plastic is everywhere, at crazy prices. Yes, at exorbitant prices. Look, Bashkiria. Wow, cool. I found organic honey. Oh, made in Moscow. Bashkirian honey made in Moscow. We'd better go now. We spent $44. Going crazy. What do you want? Tasty food comes first. <laughs> now I see why they left us such a big sum. This is insane. <laughs> Indeed, it is expensive to be vegetarian in Himki. Perhaps that is why everybody eats meat. Home swap. Meanwhile, the evening is falling on the nomadic community. It's already sunset, almost nighttime. We need to bathe the kids. I suggest using the bathtub. Well, there is fire under the tub, and it heats up the water from underneath. Yes, we need to pour water inside. Kira, look, Kira has figured it out. She has buckets. Let's go. I know what to do. Look, the hose. We can use it to fill the bathtub together. While Dad is trying to use the hose, the kids are carrying water in buckets. We found the hose. Now we need to figure out how it works. It goes over there and back. Done. The community is nomadic, but the pump is absolutely ordinary, pumping water directly from the water reservoir storage. Mom, Dad, we have water. Very well. But I guess we should heat the water. For this, we need to light the fire under the tub. Right, let's get some firewood. Do you think we should just put it in a circle? Yeah, I think so. How do we usually light a fire? Look, first things first, we have to light a match. Get inside. Light it. I need to try it? Not far from yourself. Okay, I'll try it. Thanks. Look, light the match and then this chip. Oh, wait. Why don't we take off all your clothes? Let me take off your diaper. Come here. Dad, let me try. Wait a second. Dad, let me try Dad. No, you don't need any more so far. Please. Do you want to sit inside? Let's take off your clothes. Dear, wait. It looks more like a smoke grenade. While father was playing with matches, kids have already bathed in cool water and gotten cold. So their parents decided to stop bathing them, and Nikolai gave up on lighting the fire. Meanwhile, their guests in Himki have no problems with fire. Our family in this house loves making fire, too. Oops. Nice try. Oh, on the count of three. One, two, three. The Karimovs have violated only half of the rules. Although they did not eat what the housemaid had cooked, they did ask her for help with the barbecue, and their cooking a shared dinner eventually spilled into cultural exchange. Such a small instrument. What do you call it? A juice harp. A hummus. It is usually made of metal. Forged by blacksmiths. Let's listen to it. Hello! Wonderful! Oh, it seems like we burnt them. Do you think so? The cultural exchange was too long. The vegetables are burned, but it does not matter if you do not eat all day long. Tasty. It's so tasty when cooked over the fire. Food tastes differently. Just like at home, but there are planes in the sky. We communed with fire in Moscow. It was very unusual and unexpected. We felt just as though we were at home. Emil, Igul, it's so good to meet you and talk to you, but I need to go home. My family is waiting for me. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Goodbye. 
It is nighttime in Bashkiria too, but it is much colder here. We can make one, two, three kids sleep here. How many kids do we have? Five, right? Well, two more can sleep on those three. The Viglianskis are facing a serious mathematical challenge. How can they make five kids sleep on three sleeping pads? Luckily, Nikolai is a programmer. He will manage. The shorter kids will sleep here, Maya and Lisa. Yes, Maya and Lisa, and three here. And we'll sleep here. This stuff is quite soft, by the way. I wonder what we'll cover them with. Three kids will sleep here, wearing clothes and covered with blankets. Oksana, two kids here, again wearing clothes. We can wrap them in one or two fairly thick blankets. One or two blankets are for us, all that's left is for us to stretch out and sleep here. Dad! I had no idea of how we could sleep here. Our first day was very hard. No, it was just clear that it was us, not kids, who actually needed the comfort. The kids did not care about where they would sleep at all. And the kids were on the loose, bathing in cold water, lying on the grass. It turned out that it was easier to plan where the kids will sleep than to actually make them sleep. I'm the ghost! Maya, Vlas, please lie down. Okay, come to Papa. Good night! Kids, good night. Good night! The guests in Himki have a different problem. They need to choose one of the five bedrooms for Aya to sleep in. Let's choose a bed for me to sleep in. I like this one. I guess the adults will sleep here. Let's choose a bedroom for children. What about this one? Okay. It's for both adults and kids. Where do you want to sleep? Here? Or on the top? Okay. Climb there. Good night. Aya's going to sleep, right? Good night. Good night. Sweet dreams. Only a child who is used to sleeping on a pad in the step can truly enjoy sleeping on top of a bunk bed. Oh, finally. Finally, we can relax too. I'll sleep in my clothes, just like a real nomad. Let's hug. Before sleeping. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Day two. In Bashkiria, on the morning of day two, the mother tries to figure out where the kids are sleeping and where her husband is. Oh dear. Good morning. Daddy. She cried all night, but looks happy. Maya, good morning. Did you sleep well the rest of the night? I still want to sleep. Mommy? Ah, uh, damn. Mommy? While most of the family are still sleeping, those who are awake are searching for an ordinary shower. Well, it must be like in a countryside house. Oh, a spider web. There's not much water, and it's rather cold. It's colder than the bathtub. Dad! Try to turn it on, Oksana. The water is fresh, I would say. Let's go. Let's go, Maya. The shower looked suspicious, so the family decided to use the good old bathtub. While the kids bathed in cold water again, Oksana and Nikolai refused this type of step recreation. But not all of them. Let's find something for breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's not morning already. <laughs> the breakfast is ready. You can eat. But do not forget, you're responsible for dinner. I have a recipe, some old recipes from our grandmas. Umas with nettle. For how many people do we need to cook this dish for? For your family, at least five more people. So I suggest you cook this dish over the fire. Amazing. I'll be glad to try cooking this dish. Let's have breakfast, Nikolai. It's soured milk, our traditional dish with honey and fruits. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Could you help me? What does prepare the umas mean? It's a nettle. We rub it like this to get the juice out of it. With eggs and salt? So this is what umas is all about? Yes. The family and Himki are awake too. Mom, Dad, wake up! 
Hi. You woke up so early. It's the first time that Aya has slept alone. Yes, all night till the morning. It's a big achievement for us. We realize that our daughter is growing older. <laughs> Nails are the best alarm. Emil enjoys everything that makes his body stronger. He is a nomad after all. I feel so brisk and snappy. Let's go clean up. I want to go to the children's bathroom. Okay, and I'll go to the adult one. Good thing we have so many of them. I love it too. Will the admiration of numerous bathrooms make them build their own personal house? To persuade her husband, Igol resorts to a nuclear, or rather, gas option. Look, it takes just seconds to boil water. It saves so much time. Yes, I can feel the value of time here. Bless you. I would like our future house to keep up with modern technologies. I will try to build a modern house for you, for all of us. Fine. Are you going to the spa today? Could you look up where it is for me? What's the address? Ashbury Street. It was Sarah who told Igor the address and reminded them of the house rule. Very well. <clears throat> yep, here it is. Yeah, I found it. I'll take a taxi. So, enjoy your breakfast. I'm going to change. See ya. Bye. Mother went to the spa, and father is going to stay with Aya. Babysitting one child is much easier than five. But still, is it that easy? Mom told us to change our clothes and to put your hair into a braid. Can you do it? Well, it's not that easy for me. Take a hair tie. Divide the hair into two parts. Do like this. And then like this, and like this, and then the braid's done. <laughs> I see. I guess I can manage it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like this, and like this, like this, like this. Uh, something went wrong. <clears throat> well, it's something. More like a ponytail. Yes, it's a ponytail. Never mind. While Emil is mastering the finer points of women's hairstyles, Igul arrives at the spa. Hello? Hello? Hello, I have an appointment at 10 a.m. What's your name? Oksana. It's my first time. Now you only need to take off your clothes and relax. Take off all the clothes? Yes, of course, it's for a massage. It took time to persuade Igul to take off her clothes, but then it went like clockwork. The exorcism has begun. I do not know what demons were going to drive out of you. Are you serious? Such a painful spa experience. I thought that the spa was about lying and relaxing. You will feel relaxation afterwards. Are you going to break my spine? Yes, and then reassemble it like a puzzle. So you want to break me into pieces? Oksana has to suffer like this every week. Igol, you see, this is all to stay healthy. Oh no, it's all over, dear. But the worst was yet to come. When Oksana brought the bill, the short torture cost as much as $70. $70 is an exorbitant price. It's too expensive for something like this. It's not for regular people. Home swap. In the meantime, the guests in Bashkiria went to the village to find a shop. Cereal and milk are not enough for meat eaters. Besides, they are expected to cook nettle with eggs for dinner. Good afternoon. Hello. We're trying to find a store or something nearby. Look, the store is where that car just turned the corner. Thanks a lot. Yeah, see that blue fence? They sell milk, cottage cheese. The blue fence. The food is organic, just perfect quality. Thank you so much for all this valuable information. Thank you. Come on, let's go. Come on, Oksana, let's go. Hello. Hello. Wow, what a nice shop. It sells everything we need. For example, sausage. Let's buy some sausage and bread. Bologna. Bologna. Yes, please. They love bologna. Sausage? Nikolai, how dare you? What about vegetarian house rules? Forget them. Then three or four pounds of potatoes, please. Ice cream for the kids. They'll choose it now. Also, nettle, eggs, and onions. And butter. I think we should buy sour cream and butter at that stall they told us about. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks and goodbye. Ice cream for the kids, sausage for the parents, umas for the nomadic community. Now it is time to find the ingredients for it. Knock, knock, knock. 
Oh. We were told that you sell eggs and milk. Eggs are sold out. We also need butter and sour cream. No butter, no sour cream. Ooh, who else could sell them? See the gate? Try there. Well, thanks a lot. Okay, goodbye. While Dad is trying to buy eggs from the locals, his children are also asking hens to give them some. Dad, would you finally turn around? Ding dong. Let's just go home then. We'll work something out. They did not find any eggs or milk. Maybe sausage will do. In Himki, Emil is teaching his daughter how to fish. Hi. Hello. Hello. Who are you? Where is Blas? We sell cookies every Saturday. Cookies? Yes. Cool. Yes. With Blas? Yes. He's the older brother, right? And what are your names? Masha, Sonia. Very well. We make shortbread cookies uh -huh. and sell them. It's our small business, our job. I see. Our first job. We usually go to the kitchen, make dough and bake cookies. Wonderful. Emil thought that cookies would be baked around him, as usual, and he would just give his moral support. What do you need? Baking soda. Baking soda. And we also need flour. Have you found flour? Yes. We need 14 ounces of butter. Well, take these two sticks. It's almost 14 ounces. Whatever. Where are the eggs? Here on top. Let me help you. Here you are. What if we fail? Where are you from? From Bashkiria. Do you know the city of Ufa? Yes. Do you need some more flour? Yes. Yes. Up to this day, Emil had no idea that babysitting was so hard, and making cookies with children is even harder. Are we going to heat it? I guess we can start. Well, let's get started then. Turn on both the top and the bottom heat. All right, very well. Just take the bowl and pour dough on the sheet. Just pour it. As a seasoned warrior, Emil strictly follows the house rule, albeit quite challenging. After all, it's not men's work, baking cookies. Put it in the oven. Oh, you don't know how. Fine, I can do it. I can't do it either. Oh, your dress is so beautiful. To make the experience even better, Emil had the children perform shaman dances on the trampoline. We must have overbaked it. Otherwise, it would be all right. A masterpiece. <laughs> A burnt masterpiece? This masterpiece is burnt cookies. I won't try this slush. I don't think somebody will buy them. Wow. Hello? Hi, Mom. We tried to bake cookies, but they burnt. It all burnt. You overbaked it. What shall we do with the cookies? Throw them in the garbage? Throw it in the garbage. The verdict is definitive. Emil completed his mission of babysitting while Mom was at the spa, but he is not cut out for cooking. He is cut out for the step. How was the spa? I'm impatient to know. Oh, it was so painful, really. Really? Yes, I was even screaming with pain. Oh, dear. In the end, I was as good as new. Oh, really? Well, I liked it. Today, the children's business failed, and they ran away, probably to find another partner. Father had a difficult morning. He overworked himself, as never before, and so he decided to relax in the steam barrel. I guess we need to prepare it somehow. Like a sauna? It's all about steam, I think. So it's heating. The process is underway. I just pressed the start button. I guess we just need to wait. While the Karimovs were waiting, something went wrong. Oh, no. There's no steam. Why is the water on the floor? I better switch it off. Home swap. Oh my god, what happened? I have no idea. There's just water everywhere. Do you know why? No, I don't understand. First, I'll wipe up the water. Okay. Before it gets downstairs. Right. Luckily, we have no neighbors downstairs. Sarah, good afternoon. Are you coming today? No, I can't. Something unexpected came up. I can't come today. Sarah will not come, but she told them that before heating, one should get rid of the extra water. But there was no chance that Emil knew about that in advance. At least you washed the floor. I hope Oksana will be grateful for it. I think it's time to get in.
You switched it off. Is there enough steam? Yes, I think so. Get inside then. You know how. Emil, wait. Oh, it's so hot. Yeah, indeed. Wait a second. Careful. Hey, lady. I worry about you. The Bashkirians do not seem to take off their pants and national hat at any time. This is so that you don't escape. Are you okay? Take the towel and wrap my neck. Oh, I see. Oh, you're so funny. I didn't know. Like this? Yes, perfect. I should figure out whether I put my beard on top of the towel or underneath it. <laughs> Never mind. Most importantly, the hat is on the head. This is a really nice device. I like it. The world still has something to surprise you, right? Yeah, yeah. The steam barrel is followed by the pool. Will we finally see Emil without his beloved hat? Hooray! We did it. Fantastic! The Vigilanskis have a different problem. How can they cook a dish with eggs if they have no eggs? We bought practically nothing, because we didn't find anything. We really wanted to cook at least something close to what a real umas is like. We have some food here. Will you share with us? Nomads are thoughtful. They turned out to have all the necessary ingredients. Now they need nettle sand fire. Cut it as long as possible because we have barely got any of it all here. Wait, dear, I'll get some dill. Well, Mila, are you in? Yes. Okay. Pick the nettles. They were done with the nettles quite quickly, but making the fire was a challenge. Why? This trivet is to cook soup. Dad, let me try. Stop, stop. Dear, why so low? Perhaps a bit higher? All's good. Why are you so sure of that? Because I did it myself. So it's all right. Oksana, I'm sure of it. First, crumple the newspaper, then put small wood chips all around the perimeter of it. Yasya, give it to Vlas, now. Yasya, please give it to Vlas. No, give it to me. No, no, no. They told you to give it to me. Stop, go away, all of you. Girls, I can't do anything because you're constantly pushing me around. Too many of us here. Dear, do not throw ash in there. It's not going to burn at all. Let me try the last match. No, go away, all of you. Put it somewhere. I ask you not to throw ash in there. Girls, why aren't you listening to me? Dad, give me the matches, please. Dad, give me the matches. I have a match. The process of lighting the fire was very funny. The kids covered everything in ash, and I could not get a single spark to come out. A bad workman blames his tools. <laughs> a nomad from the community lended a hand. Seemingly, fire is his speciality. Hi, guys, how are things? I can't make a fire. Maybe some shamanism would help you out. Anything would help. Well, let me try. We're ready. It's their second day in the yurt, but the family of a psychologist and programmer is ready to summon the fire spirit. Parents will do whatever it takes to feed five hungry children. This is called a juice harp. You need to stretch it a bit, like this. Never mind, this happens all the time. Before that, I saw a man wearing a deer skin and playing something like this only on the Discovery Channel. Look! Doing it like this. Dad learned to play. Well done. Blast, come on! Done. Perfect. Let's see if the spirits will help make a fire. Of course, after that stuff, I managed to make fire. It was wonderful. The spirits were generous towards Nikolai, and he finally made the fire. But the spirits do not chop vegetables, so the family had to do it on their own. So our shamanism has borne fruit, so to speak. Possessed by spirits, the wood chips turned into fire. I enjoyed cooking over the fire. I've done it before, of course. Food which is cooked over an open fire has different energy. I've always wanted to cook our meals over an open fire. Home swap. In Himki, someone has gone missing. Do you remember his name? 
Kitty, kitty, where's the cat? Let's find it and feed it. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Could it have gone out into the street? Do you remember his name? Kitty. Kitty, kitty is a universal cat name. Kitty. Kitty, kitty. Do not think that Aya is crying. It is an old shaman ritual to bring the cat back, but it does not always work. Kitty, we need to find it. Kitty. Aya, it's not here. Perhaps he's in the room where you slept. I think he's more likely to be home. Hopefully. While the guests in Himki are looking for the local predator, the herbivorous nomads in Bashkiria are having their vegetarian dinner. Personally, I'm used to cooking over an open fire, but for Oksana, it was unusual. I have never cooked over the fire. Congratulations on a new experience. Thank you. For your first time, you did great. I like it. The umas is great, just the way the local grannies cook it. Yes, thanks. Thank you, I'm pleased. In this case, comparing Oksana to grannies sounds like a compliment. Don't worry, you have another plate. I guess she split it over herself. I hope it wasn't too hot. No, no, it seems like she's fine. Dad, I said thanks to the spirits. Excellent, so you communed with nature. With nature. Later, they continue to talk to the spirits in the language of music. The nomad neighbors have a party tonight, and they invited the Vigilianskis as a gesture of thanks for the dinner. Join us, please. Okay, thanks. We have a celebration. I guess this could be a new page in our life. What do you think? Yes. The nomads gave the kids some sweets, offering their parents a chance to spend a few minutes together. But all good things must end. According to the rules of the project, families are introduced to each other via a video call at the end of the second day. It is their only chance to share their impressions of the home swap. It's time to come back to the yurt. Hello there. How are you there? That's a good question. Hey, stop fighting now. What's going on? We understood that the family who lives here is not as big as ours. Now you can watch and see what happens when all of us try and gather together in one place. She's pushing and beating me, Dad! Besides, we do not hear you at all, you know? It's kind of scary. And she also kicked me in the belly! They're howling and yelling. We had to stop our call for technical reasons. The Vigilanskis had to send their kids next door. How do you survive it? Survive is the right word. I love eating meats, drinking wine. <laughs> and we have five children. Sarah usually helps with that. Yeah, Sarah is very helpful. She cooked your favorite pilaf for us. Did you like it? With meat, right? With meat? The salad which goes with it is amazing. <laughs> We had troubles making fire. We performed all the necessary rituals, played the jaw harp. <laughs> then the wood chips got possessed by the spirits and everything was just fine. Your cat, is it a he or a she? It's a she. Oh, we thought it's a boy. We lost her. We saw her yesterday, but today we can't find her. I've just had an idea. We saw two red cats here. We'll just take them with us, if anything. It's a he and a she. And the horse. We were we're so happy to stay in your house. Yes. Thank you. You're heroes. Good job. We also have many... It's a very interesting experience for us. Good night. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Day three. The third day in the yurt started with breakfast. Hey, guys, who wants sausage? Me, me. Very well, mom will slice it. Remember the house rules. It's forbidden to eat sausage here, but it is difficult for us, the meat eaters, without sausage and meat. Have some tea, dear. Hey! Floss, what's so funny? Wipe it up, quickly. Oh no, on the carpet. Andre! Andre! 
Could you help us, please? Give me the tights, for God's sake. It would be funny if it weren't so sad. Yes, yes, quickly! The Vigilanskis held out for two days, but on day three, they gave up and broke two house rules at a time. Hide the sausage, Mom! Vlas, your sausage is falling. What happened? We spilled tea. Oh, what's the smell? It's the tea. It's the tea. You see? You'd better air the yurt. And the bread. Tell us, please, how to wash it. Well, we wash everything in the river. You need to take all the things out. What's done is done. In our house? It's a usual thing, and I mean it. You don't agree? We don't have carpets in our house. If we spill something, we just wipe it up. No carpets. Every day we spill something on the sofas. You do it too. I thought only kids do it. Home swap. We have no idea how to do it. Could you help us, please? It's very easy. Kids make cute eyes like the cat in Shrek. Please, please. You only need to drag it out to the nearest body of water and clean it. That's it. If we go and take it into the water now, we're going to ruin it completely. Andre, we still have about $30. We have some money. Nikolai, why did you tell him we have $30? Maybe you'll agree to 15 What's going on? I don't understand you. Put the money away. Put it away. We have some money left after shopping. Perhaps we could find someone who would do it for us and we would pay them. I think Guzel and I can do it. And how much would it cost us? Is $15 enough? Good change. Almost a bargain. Okay, thanks then. Deal. Can you possibly turn down such a big family, especially for $15? At home, I can always call the cleaners. Or buy a magic cleanser. But here, there isn't anything at all. So I had to ask Andre to come and help us out. Thank you again for helping us. I need to take a photo. We broke the rule. They wrote that carpets are the most precious things in their house. Not these carpets, but those hanging on the wall. Oh, really? The ones on the walls are handmade by local women, and these are the mass-produced ones. Oh, I see. I suggest that we take a photo of them anyway. On the third day, Emil felt homesick and decided to build a yurt for his family inside the house. Look, Dad is doing something interesting. I'm tired of eating at a table and sitting on chairs. You want to eat in a yurt? Yes. Unroll it. Okay. Try the Moscow honey, Emil. Okay. From Moscow. Some foreign food. It's not honey. Look, somebody's coming. Oh, dreads. Cool, hello. Hello, we have an appointment. Where is Oksana? I'm here in her place. Are you their relatives? No, we just swapped homes. Are you Oksana's friends? No, we're her students. Can you have a lesson with us instead of her? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> this is the advanced level. We're just beginners. Emil is bound to be a good teacher, but according to the house rules, it is the wife who holds lessons. Where do you have lessons? Outdoors? Aigul is used to meditating in nature. Close your eyes. My husband often does yoga, so I learned some of the movements. And here is the husband. Bashkirian men love controlling everything, especially when the guests are pretty young ladies. Legs together, legs together. Now turn. Rest your elbows on your knees. It's even more difficult. It looks like a break dance. <laughs> Bashkirian breakdance evolved into a shaman ritual. Aya joined in too. And of course, the ritual was followed by a photo session.
The day was unexpectedly eventful for me. Now I really want to start studying yoga seriously. Emil still misses the yurt. Having breakfast on the floor and performing a ritual was not enough for him, so he took the family for a walk in the field. The Kimki forest is well known for having lots of mushrooms. We decided to go and see if the rumors are true. Shamans are said to be able to read secret signs, but things are much easier on the outskirts of Moscow. As soon as they left the house, they saw a good omen. An excellent one, in fact. I have never seen such interesting horses. What a nice horse! What a nice horse! <laughs> Hey, I don't have anything. He's hungry. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. You're a chicken. I don't have any food. Look, nothing. Oh, he's following you. Look, moss. Hello. Hello, forest. Hello, little pine. Let's follow this path. Don't forget to look for mushrooms. Call the mushrooms. Hey, mushrooms! They chose the right way to find mushrooms near Moscow. A little while longer and the local mushrooms will be able to talk. Wow, we found them. Look at this field, so many mushrooms. Aya, look! Hooray! Hooray! Can you imagine? Organic chanterelles. They grow in groups. Look. Yeah? So many of them. They always grow in groups. Look over here. Okay. Don't step on the mushrooms. Watch where you're going. Luckily, Dad collected all the mushrooms before his daughter crushed them. After the quiet and successful hunt, the family started to look for the exit. And the exit was unexpectedly lively. Oh, the traffic is so intense. Is it safe to eat these mushrooms? I'm a bit worried. Well, this is Moscow. What do you expect? We were afraid to even think about using these mushrooms for cooking. Look, they sell something. Good afternoon. From your garden? Yes, please try them. They're not organic. We have everything organic. Will we buy them? No, of course. They're not organic. What about the flowers? Are they organic? Yes, $4.20. $4.20? And these are $2.80. $2.80. For ordinary daisies? Moscow prices. Moscow prices. $2.80 for these and $1.40 for those. Okay, take them, dear. Emil turned out to be not only the king of step and horses, but also street trade guru. He managed to get a two-for-one special on flowers in Kimki. Thank you. This is for you. I love you, but your tomatoes just aren't organic. Yes, they are. <laughs> Home swap. And the guests in Bashkiria are having guests themselves. Oksana has to quickly master the local traditions of hospitality. Look. Hello. 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 It's so beautiful here. And you just... You seem to belong to this place. Thank you. Would you make some tea for us? Do you remember the house rule? It said that the husband is the lord of the house. And is to entertain the guests. Remember? Okay, please. Welcome, dear guests. Oksana, let's make some tea. Look, the joke about entertaining guests was good, but... No. I'll try. Go. Okay. Why are you wearing these costumes? We're wearing Bashkirian national clothing. The women are wearing breastplates and I'm wearing a men's costume. A shirt, a national hat. These are the clothes for nomads. With coins. The breastplates are made of coins and tokens. They run in the family. They're quite valuable and can be sold if necessary. A nice life hack for those who like traveling. Coins on the chest is better than traveler's checks. I have a question. I'm serving the tea now. Who do I serve first, according to your traditions? Of course, you serve tea and food to the elderly first. I see. And then to the rest of the adults. Men come first, of course. Children are not allowed at the table at all. This is good. Oksana managed to entertain guests and serve them tea and honey, so they completed at least one rule. Thank you for the tea. Thanks. The Bashkirian guests were happy and continued their nomadic journey. Meanwhile, the Karimovs returned home to find something there. Dad, the cat! No way. Did she find the way here? Hi, Kitty. Kitty, finally we found you. Come on, I'll give you something to eat. Come on. Kitty, I wonder what her name is. Kitty is her name. Just Kitty. Why is she watching me like that? Because she hasn't eaten meat for three days. The cat had no intention of becoming a vegan. Don't be afraid, just give her a stroke. 
home swap. The third day of the project is coming to an end. It is time to pack. The families leave the photos as keepsakes and go back home, carrying lots of new memories. For me, traveling with five kids means leaving my comfort zone. It's the first time we have traveled with all five of the kids. Of course, we should make our family bigger and have even more children. <laughs> but we need a big house for it. The remainder of the Karimov's budget is $21.80, while the Vigilanskis bring $22 back home. Oksana, who did not believe that one can live for three days with $70, spent only around $20. Home swap. The three-day intensive survival challenge is complete. The participants share their feelings and thoughts and make videos about it. Dear Yurt, you are nowhere near a real house. There's no space, not even a bed, really. <laughs> Good night, kids. Good night. The toilet and shower are outdoors. It was hard to bathe the kids. We have no option. All in all... It was a challenge for us. We violated some of the rules that you set out. We apologize for spilling tea on the carpets. They should have cleaned it on their own. We decided to finish the attic and the basement as soon as we came back home said that there is more space for the kids to move around and play more freely in our house. House, we like you very much, but you are square and I am used to living in a roundhouse. We are used to it. We especially like that you can feel the presence of children here. Luckily, there are no neighbors. We spilled some water on the floor. Nothing happened. It's all in hand. Our daughter got more mature during these three days. Now she sleeps alone. House, thanks for reminding us again that we would like to live in a big house, a dome house, just like Emil wants. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How will we? Nikolai kept his word and started decorating the attic as soon as he came back to Himki. As for Emil, he is preparing to build a big dome house. For now, he is just making plans. It will be the most unusual house in Bashkortostan. Home swap.